So now we're going to focus on arcs and chords and their relationship to one another. So two chords are congruent if they intercept congruent arcs. So on this circle, Z, the arc ZY is equal to 108 degrees and arc W x is equal to 108 degrees. So that means zy is congruent to arc wx. So that means that chord zy has to be congruent to chord wx. So if ZY equals 10, that means WX also has to equal 10. Okay. Two arcs of a circle are congruent if their chords are congruent. So this is like the other one. It's just the contrapositive of it. So these two chords, so ST e equals 10 and VU equals 10. So that means ST, chord ST is congruent to chord VU. So that means that chord, or er, sorry, arc VU is congruent to arc ST. So if arc VU equals 93, then ST also has to equal 93. So now that we know that, we're going to take it one step further. So the perpendicular bisector of a chord of a circle, so we're talking of, about this chord of this circle, So the perpendicular bisector, which is this line right here, because it intercepts this chord to form a right angle, well, four right angles. These are all right angles. And it has to contain the center of the chord, and it bisects the arc of the chords. So that means that QR, this chord right here, is congruent to RP. QN, this chord right here, is congruent to PN. PN and since it's a bisector it means it bisects this chord QR into two equal parts so that means that Q um, we're gonna call this point right here R so that QR is congruent to RP which makes sense because if these two chords are congruent, then these two segments must be congruent. So now we're going to do an example. So we have this circle where K is the center of the circle, MI, we're going to try and tell what kind of relationship MI has to JL. Well, since there's a right angle right here, that must mean that MI is perpendicular to LJ, this line right here, because when they intersect, it forms a right angle. So KH, 
right here is equal to 6 and LJ this entire thing is equal to 16. So first we want to know that what LH is congruent to. So LH is this piece right here. It's congruent to JH right here. Because when MI intersects JL, it not only forms a right angle, it cuts JL into two equal pieces. So arc G LM, which is this arc right here, is congruent to this arc right here, JM. Because these, if you look at MI, it's also the diameter of this circle. So this arc is the corresponding part of this is corresponding to this arc. So I m bisects, first we're going to give it the line that it bisects, which is j l. It also bisects this whole entire circle so that it bisects I, J, M, and M, L, I, because it divides this entire circle up into congruent pieces. So the midpoint of L, J, which is this line right here, is what? Well, if you remember, the midpoint of a line is the point that divides that segment into two equal parts. Well, right here I have two equal parts, so that must mean that H is the midpoint of segment LJ. So LH right here equals what? Well, since we know that LJ is 16, and that H is the midpoint of LJ, we can just divide 16 divided by 2 and you'll get 8 if you do that. So that each one of these pieces has to be 8, I think it's centimeters, 8 centimeters. So LH is 8 centimeters and JH is also 8 centimeters. Now they want to know the length of LK, this segment right here. Well, if you think about it, KL has to be congruent to J, K. Because if we were to do the Pythagorean theorem, we would have an A, which is 8, a B, which is 6, and a C right here for this triangle, and we'd have an A of 8, a B of 6, and a C right here of this triangle. So in order to find out what L, K is, and j, k equal, we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. So we're, because these are right triangles. So we're going to take 8 squared plus 6 squared and set it equal to c squared. We get 64 plus 36 equals c squared. c squared equals 100. And if you remember, the square, th square root of 100 is 10. So c equals plus or minus 10. Now let's talk about that answer f for a second. Since these are distances, c cannot be negative, so c has to equal 10. So both lk and jk equal 10. Well, that's all we have for today. Be sure to watch the next lesson.